Can you guess what two specs have the highest death rates in Solo Shuffle? Coming in at number one is Destro Warlock, and number two is Feral Druid. But why are these such amazing targets? And are there any other specs that you absolutely need to attack in your next lobby? Today, we will find out as we break down the best targets in Solo Shuffle at three different levels while giving you some tips on how to land more kills against every spec. Before we start, be sure to check out skillcap.com. Everything at Skillcap is backed by a rating game guarantee. Yes, we literally promise that you will go up in rating while using our guides, and if you don't, then you shouldn't pay. Visit the links below to get started, but for now, let's get back to the video. Let's break down what each targeting level represents. The bottom is good to tunnel, and you guessed it, these are the specs that are pretty safe to attack no matter what, since they either include targets that are squishy and easy to kill, or dangerous and important to shut down. The next level is neutral, which are targets that can be good to attack depending on the situation. Maybe they're tanky in the early game but squishy and dampening, or maybe your comp can abuse some of their weaknesses. These won't be the best targets in the lobby of all time, but don't count them out, especially as targets to swap to later on. The final level includes specs that you should skill check, and here you need to do some testing. This is because there are some specs that are tanky on paper, and if played well can avoid a lot of damage. These specs won't be impossible to kill, but can easily become bait, especially against more competent players who can correctly use their defenses. Now, you might be wondering what to do when there is a melee and ranged on the enemy team, and both are the same priority. In the majority of cases, you are safe attacking the ranged, unless your comp is better suited for bullying the melee. And as a general rule, that will always be true, Larger maps are less friendly to melee, and training some casters on maps like Tolveron can be bait, with potential kiting tools like Gateway or Alter Time getting more value on big open maps. And with that out of the way, let's cover the melee that are safe to tunnel in most lobbies. First up in this category is Feral Druid, who might actually be the number one target in the game for a few reasons. For one, training a Feral Druid will limit the amount of Cyclones they can land, which is not only good for avoiding CC, but helps reduce their overall damage by denying Feral Frenzy procs. And secondly, Feral Druids are relatively squishy and are very reliant on cooldowns to survive. It's pretty easy to force Barkskin, Renewal, and Survival Instincts with offensive cooldowns. And once these are down, Druids need to rely on Bear Form, which reduces their damage output significantly, and now even provides less armor after recent nerfs. And while under pressure, Feral Druids become more reliant on self-healing, which is weak in general but only gets worse in dampening. Speaking of self-healing, Enhancement Shaman is also a good target in the late game, but is generally safe to tunnel regardless. Just like Feral Druid, Enhance is fairly squishy outside of its two major defensives, and once Astral Shift and Burrow have been forced, Shamans can feel extremely limited. There is even a small chance that the Shaman will not be playing Burrow at all, which obviously makes them extremely prone to getting bullied. Survival Hunters are also good targets to attack, and are prone to getting trained in some lobbies. Unlike BM and Marks, who can deal all of their damage from range, Survival will inevitably be more exposed, especially when harpooning across the map to land traps. The Hunter defensive kit is also quite weak, and after the change to survival tactics in 10.2, Hunters can no longer remove magical dots with feigned death. The major defensives you will have to deal with include a short wall effect from Survival of the Fittest, and of course, Roar of Sacrifice, which oftentimes can be killed through with raw damage. But if you manage to force any of these CDs, Hunters will be great targets to train if you can keep up with their mobility. Sticking on theme, DKs also make excellent targets. Now obviously, if you are playing a caster, then AMS might feel obnoxious to damage into, and of course, IVF might feel a bit cheap if you are reliant on stuns. But once these cooldowns are over, DKs become exceptionally better targets over time. In deeper dampening, Death Knights become significantly more squishy, seeing reduced absorption on AMS and nerfed healing on Death Strike. On top of this, attacking a DK will limit their mobility to some degree, so it can even be defensively useful to keep them under pressure. Last up on the Good to Tunnel category are Assassination Rogues. Asa is the squishiest rogue spec by far, and unlike Sub, it needs to be constantly pushed in to maintain uptime, which means being more exposed to damage. The obvious elephant in the room when training rogues is the fact that you will have to deal with not one, not two, but even three complete damage immunities. But unlike the other two rogue specs, Assassination doesn't have any CDR for these defensives, which means once these abilities are forced, you now have a two minute window where the rogue will be vulnerable to raw damage. Now that we know which melee are the best to attack, let's move on to melee that are good neutral targets. We've now moved Demon Hunter to this category, despite the fact that we previously considered them a skill check. Despite having some passive spell damage reduction, Demon Hunters can be great targets to attack if you can manage to consistently burn through their defenses. One advantage of attacking DH is that you can actually stall some of their momentum by forcing Netherwalk, which prevents them from attacking. Demon Hunters are also quite squishy in stuns, but be careful since against more experienced players, you might have to play around glimpse before committing your stun. So just wait for the backflip to end and you will avoid a ton of frustration. 
Warriors are also good neutral targets, but typically never a priority target unless there are no better options. Both Arms and Fury are now better target options for melee after recent hotfixes to armor values, and as always, caster heavy lobbies are great at abusing warriors on larger maps where mobility can become an issue. The same is true for Rhett Paladin, who can easily be bullied on larger maps and lobbies with multiple caster DPS. Catching a Rhett Paladin in the open and removing Blessing of Freedom quickly can make them very susceptible to damage, but in doing so, you will still need to burn through multiple defensive cooldowns. This is sometimes why Rhett Paladins seem so tanky in the early game, since you are up against minor CDs like Shield of Vengeance and Divine Protection, and major cooldowns like Bubble, Lay on Hands, Blessing of Protection, and even Spellbop. For these reasons, you need to check for Paladin CDs first, while also paying close attention to Forbearance, because when it's active, you will always have a much stronger kill window. And speaking of needing to check for CDs, Outlaw Rogues can make it quite tricky due to their CDR on evasion with the float like a butterfly passive. This is one reason why both Outlaw and Sub are more durable than Assassination, since in longer games you will have to deal with more cooldown cycles. But at the end of the day, Rogues are still quite squishy in stuns and are often at the whim of cheat death to keep them alive. So if you can manage to force a trinket and have burst ready, you might be able to take the rogue down, but otherwise, you will have to climb over a wall of cooldowns. To wrap up melee, let's look at the two remaining specs that require a skill check to see if they will be good targets. First in this category is Windwalker Monk. The reason monks go here is because of how many defensives they can cycle through, including Touch of Karma, Dampen Harm, Diffuse Magic, and the ability to instantly escape damage with their port. On paper, monks have a lot of ways to avoid death, but, a wise man once said, paper is a flimsy thing that goes see-through when you rub grease on it. If a monk is playing reckless with their defensives or can't find their port bind, then they can be good targets, especially in stuns. But if your lobby lacks reliable lockdown and the monk is constantly free to port away, then committing your damage into them could be a big mistake. And for similar reasons, Sub Rogue is the remaining melee in the skill check category. Subtlety is the only rogue spec with two charges of vanish, which also give 15 seconds of cooldown reduction to all abilities when used, which means that they will typically get two uses out of all major defensives in the average solo shuffle game. Sub is also the only rogue spec with Shadowy Duel, which can be used as a pseudo-defensive cooldown, temporarily removing them as a target from enemy DPS. As previously mentioned, however, rogues are killable, but you just need to check for defensives first. Committing lots of damage into a rogue with Trinket and full CDs ready can instantly become a waste of time, so aim to find brief moments where cooldowns are limited and you will have a much stronger kill window. And with that, we have our final rankings for target selection in Solo Shuffle. Across all ratings, both Feral Druids and Enhancement Shamans have the highest death rates out of any melee in the bracket, and now it should be clear why they are very common targets. By the way, if you want to learn how to beat your toughest matchups in Solo Shuffle, then you should know that with a skill cap membership, you can get a free VOD review, but for a limited time only. That's right, Rank 1 players will watch your gameplay and give you personalized advice that you can implement instantly into your own gameplay. Also, be sure to check out our amazing commentaries page, where you can sort through hundreds of matchups and have Rank 1 players teach you winning strategies for your hardest counters. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below to get started. Now let's move on to range DPS, starting with the best targets to train. It should not surprise you that Destro Warlock takes the first spot on this list. Despite getting some recent armor increases that result in 6% less physical damage taken, we are still expecting Destro to continue having the highest overall death rate in solo shuffle in most brackets. In reality, Warlocks are actually one of the more tanky casters in the game thanks to the combination of two highly efficient defensives, Dark Pact and Teleport. The ability to press a 1 minute defensive while stunned and then port to safety can make all Warlock specs feel quite durable, especially against casters, where Nether Ward becomes another obstacle to deal with. Instead, the reason why both Destro and Affliction can make such great targets is simply because they often pose the biggest threat in Arena if left free to cast. This is especially true for Affliction, who is the most limited on spell schools compared to both Destro and Demonology. Repeatedly denying unstable affliction casts will shut down tons of momentum, which is generally why as a melee DPS affliction warlocks are often a high priority target. The same can be said for balanced druids, who actually have the second highest death rate for ranged DPS across all ratings, and now will be even squishier after a nerf to their armor in recent hotfixes. Leaving a boomkin free to cast can be a complete disaster because Cyclone is arguably the best CC in the game for controlling arena tempo. If you let a boomkin free cast clone all game, it will be enormously frustrating for your team to ever get pressure rolling. Combine that with the fact that Boomkins are pretty squishy, you can actually deny some of their damage output when training them, as it will often force them into bear form where they deal virtually zero damage. Another squishy ranged is Shadow Priest, who can do quite a bit of damage and even be quite disruptive to kill setups when left free. 
In the past, Shadow Priest was considered one of the tankier casters, but these days they are simply a victim class. Relying on one spell school to deal the majority of their pressure means that training a Shadow Priest will shut down a lot of momentum, which is why they make excellent targets, especially for melee DPS. And despite not being a true caster, Mark's Hunter also makes our list as a good range DPS to train. Now obviously, you can't interrupt a Mark's Hunter directly on their damage, but simply tunneling them down forces them to commit more globals into kiting, which in some ways can limit their damage output. As we will discuss soon, the inability to freely deal damage on the move is what separates Mark's and BM on this list. But before we do, let's move on to both Devastation and Augmentation of Ochre. Now obviously, Devastation is more meta, being 10 times as popular as the previously dominant support spec. In some lobbies, Devastation can feel a bit tankier compared to other casters, but sticking on theme, it's important that you shut them down since Disintegrate can randomly proc Eternity Surges, which can deal lethal amounts of damage in a single channel. Last up in the good to train category is Fire Mage. Mage can be very annoying and even quite difficult to kill in general, especially in a melee heavy lobby on bigger maps. With that said, Fire Mage is actually the easiest mage spec to kill due to Glass Cannon passively reducing their HP, combined with the fact that the spec lacks a reliable slow. Altogether, this means fire mages can be really good targets, since you are more likely to have uptime, or at the very least, you will force them to blink backwards the entire game, allowing your healer to be more free. Now that we've covered the best ranged targets, let's take a look at the three specs in our neutral category. First up is Demonology Warlock, who is the tankiest of all three Warlock specs thanks to Soul Link, giving them an additional 10% damage reduction over Destro and Affliction. On top of this, demo damage really isn't that threatening, especially now after nerfs to Tyrant. Of course, Demo Warlocks can put up a lot of scoreboard damage, but it's going to feel less impactful compared to Destro and Affliction. For similar reasons, BM Hunters are also in the neutral category. As we've discussed, the Hunter class as a whole can be very squishy, but the key difference between Marks and BM is that training a Beast Mastery Hunter doesn't really stop their damage by a big margin. On top of this, BM can do most of its damage while moving, which means if you play caster DPS, it might feel frustrating trying to chase them across the map as they simply truck you down with endless pet damage. Last up in our neutral category is Elemental Shaman. Just like many of the other casters on this list, shamans can get bullied in melee heavy lobbies, but unlike Enhancement, Ellie has an easier time creating distance and can even do an absurd amount of damage without needing to hard cast. Finally, some casters might have an exceptionally difficult time killing Ellie Shamans because of Seasoned Winds, which can add up to 45% spell damage reduction at a time. And to conclude our ranged target tier list, let's look at the remaining two specs to skill check. If you've been keeping track, it's both Frost and Arcane Mage. Both of these specs can be hard to pin down for similar reasons. They're both very good at zoning out their opponents through slows and snares, and can easily exploit their mobility kit to avoid a ton of damage. Frost will occasionally root enemy melee for free thanks to Frostbite, while Arcane will have an almost permanent speed increase through Chrono Shift. So, due to how slippery both these specs can be in combination with their highly efficient defensives, you will need to do a skill check before locking in a mage as your kill target. That brings us to our final rankings, and as you might have noticed, there are more ranged targets to train compared to melee. In fact, if you check First Blood stats, 9 out of the top 10 death rates belong to ranged DPS specs with Feral Druid as the only exception. This is one reason why we stress that if you have both a melee and ranged DPS in the same category, it's almost always going to be safer attacking the range since you will stop more damage. Now though, we have to answer an obvious question. Is it ever a good idea to train a healer? For the most part, not really. Let's explain. Training a healer can be risky in some matchups since you are leaving both DPS free, which can easily spell disaster depending on the lobby. For instance, if you're playing into Destro Warlock, Dev Evoker as double melee on Tolveron, you are leaving two targets that are good to train to freely damage and control the group. Because of this, training a healer typically requires a more melee heavy lobby on smaller maps, where the enemy healer can easily get locked down without your group running the risk of getting peeled or overwhelmed by enemy damage. With that said, there are some healers which can be trained if it fits your lobby. First on this list is Holy Paladin, who actually has the highest death rate of any healer in Solo Shuffle. Despite being plate wearers, Holy Paladins can be good targets, since by hitting them, you essentially remove all value from Blessing of Sacrifice. Whenever you see this cooldown active on a DPS, it can actually be beneficial to swap to a Holy Paladin to add on to the damage they will be taking. Holy Paladins are also very limited on spell schools, and often need to hard cast some portion of their healing, which opens them up to being punished easily by interrupts. Preservation of Ochres can also make good targets, but there are two obstacles you have to deal with before fully committing. The first is Nullifying Shroud, which you will need to purge or otherwise wait out its 30 second duration, since when it's active, it's nearly impossible to keep the Evoker in one place. The second major obstacle is Emerald Communion, which Evokers can press while stunned, and funnels an enormous amount of healing into the Evoker while active. 
If Nullifying Shroud is down and Communion is on cooldown, Evokers make excellent targets that can be trained for the rest of the game. Fistweaver Monks can also be trained, but once again, there will be some obstacles. Most Mistweaver Monks play with a PvP talent that allows them to port while stunned, which is almost a guaranteed save unless the monk happens to be standing very close to their port location. But in general, Fist Weavers are fairly decent targets since they are constantly exposed to damage. Finally, Resto Shamans can be a good target to train, but are deceptively tanky these days even into double melee. Shaman healing cooldowns are all individually small, but collectively they can wall out a ton of damage. This means if you want to successfully train a shaman, your goal will be to get them out of earthen wall totem, while also quick to snipe any healing stream and especially healing tide totems since the shaman will be relying on these sources of healing while free casting is limited. That leaves everyone else in our second category, which are healers that are good to swap to. Up first is Resto Druid, which actually might be the best healer to swap to for a few reasons. In general, swapping to anyone will be good against Resto Druid since they have the best single target healing in the game and need to manually ramp their healing when a new target is being attacked. Resto Druids themselves are often good swap targets if they are playing in the open since they tend to take quite a bit of damage and are reliant on Tranquility to avoid lethal damage. So if you can manage to catch the Druid in a stun without a Trinket or if Tranquility is on cooldown, then the Resto Druid can be a good swap target. Next up are Caster Mistweaver Monk. Here we have the same obstacle as before. The ability to port while stunned can make monks difficult to actually kill, and you need to actively monitor their port position before committing too much damage. On top of this, Mistweaver Monks often play super far back, so your best chance at actually scoring a kill might be whenever the monk is pushing up, since that means they are trying to land CC on your healer. Finally, our last two healers that can be swapped to include both Priest Specs. Both Discipline and Holy Priest take less damage passively thanks to Focused Will, and even if you manage to lock them down, Pain Suppression and Guardian Spirit can be pressed while stunned, which in many cases will completely deny a kill. So if you want to actually score a kill on a Priest healer, you will need to play around their defensives first, because otherwise you are setting them up for an easy cooldown trade. That brings us to our final rankings of healer targets inside Solo Shuffle. As we mentioned, Holy Paladin actually has the highest death rate out of any healer in the bracket. But keep in mind that healer death rates are universally lower than DPS, since training a healer can be a massive risk. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 400 rating guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of WoW PvP guides on the internet. With over 1,200 guides curated into over 300 courses across every class, no one can compare. We also have a growing library of over 1,600 arena commentaries where rank 1 pros and AWC champions teach you how to play your toughest matchups. And if that wasn't enough, Skill Cap members can also join the premium section of our Discord server where they gain direct contact to our network of pro players. This feature has helped players just like you reach their rating goals. So if you are serious about improving and want to start seeing immediate results, sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month. As always, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.